Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anupam here and today we are ready with another class that is about hyponatremia. We will cover this hyponatremia class in two subclass. First class will deal with water and sodium balance in the body, a basic concepts and how to reach a diagnosis starting from the serum sodium and using other lab values. In the second subclass we will discuss about the treatment algorithm of hyponatremia and what we have to be careful of. So let us go straight into it. So in the body, the two mechanisms by which water balance is maintained. The first is when there is hypovolemia, what will happen? Hypovolemia will stimulate the posterior pituitary to release, release AVP. What is AVP? Arginine vasopressin. It's otherwise called also antidiuretic hormone. And what it actually do is two things. First thing, it acts on the V1 receptor in the blood vessel and increase the blood pressure. Second thing, what it does it? It acts on the V2 receptor in the kidney and what it, what it does, it retains free water. So it is body's protective mechanism. When you are dealing with a low blood pressure, the body will try to maintain the blood pressure by constricting the blood vessels at the same time absorbing the water from the collecting tubule of the kidney, right? And another thing is there when there will be hypovolemia there will be thirst mechanism will be activated and this will also cause retention of free water. What happens in the kidney? We will now come to the nephron. So the nephron structure schematic diagram This diagram you have to remember for most of our discussion today. So this is the nephron and the most important structure here is this is called the JG apparatus. Now consider we have a switch here just about here and that switch you remember always whenever there is decrease in the volume in the body the flow through this nephron will be decreased. So because the flow is decreased now the switch will come down. What does that mean is when the switch comes down, it is actually off. So it is actually on. When it is goes up, it is off. When fluid flow will be increased, what will happen at the time? At the time, because of the fluid pressure, the switch will go up. So the JG apparatus will go off. When fluid is less, it will the switch will come down because there is less pressure from fluid. So it will, the JG press will turn on. This is, this is just to remember, I have prepared this mnemonic just to remember what happens in the nephron. So now, so what is the JG apparatus is supposed to do? It will secrete renin. Renin will secrete, secrete angiotensin 1, then angiotensin 2, aldosterone, and that aldosterone will act on here, here. Alstron will cause sodium retention and acid secretion and bicarbonate retention at, and because they are doing this now what, what the ABP or ADH will do? It will work in tandem with aldosterone to retain free water. This framework you have to remember for the majority of our class then it will be very easy for our discussion, correct? So now let's come to 
hyponatrium algorithm and we'll see how it will be very useful while we are dealing with how to diagnose hyponatremia, the differential diagnosis. Hyponatremia. Right, that will be by definition less than 135 milliequivalent per lead. Correct. Now, whenever there is a hyponatremia, we have to understand another concept that is called the osmolarity concept right so i'll just write it here what is the formula of serum osmolality all osmolarity will it short form it is called serum osms right so the formula is 2 into sodium plus glucose by 18 plus urea by 2.8 how to remember 2 from sodium, 8 from glucose, 2 by 8. So, this is the formula for serum osmolarity. This value is around 285 to 295 milliosm. So, now you can see sodium is multiplied by 2 and glucose is divided, urea is divided. So, the majority of the osmolarity of the plasma or the serum is decided by the sodium. So, whenever sodium will decrease or so whenever there is a hyponatremia, there has to be hyposmolar because sodium is the major contributor to the osmolality. So, whenever it is decreased, serum osmolality should also decrease, right. So, next step will be check serum osmolality, right. Not by this formula, you have to calculate it will calculate in the lab. Correct. Now, if the lab osmolality is low, what does that mean? Is we have a true hyponatremia. Right? Because the sodium should decrease the serum osmolality and it is doing that. So, it is a true hyponatremia. However, if the serum osmolality is normal or it is increased, what will happen? This is not normal because when sodium decreases, osmolality should decrease. So, if it is normal, it will be called pseudo hyponatremia. So, in that situation, you have to find out what is the reason. Usual reason would be lipid. Then we will have glycine. Then we have post TURP. Right? These are called pseudo hyponatremia. If it is increased, then we have to find out why it is increased. From this formula, we can have an increase in glucose. We can have an increase in urea or plus additional substance. Now we have to think really about ethanol, methanol, propylene glycol, alcohol intoxication, right? So what are the, this will be called hypertonic hyponatremia. What will the reason, as I told you, now we have to really be concerned about ethanol. methanol propylene glycol these toxicities can happen or we can have urine we can have dka with very high blood sugar or honk right these things you can have this is called hypertonic hyponatremia so these things have a different treatment altogether this so hyponatremia in the setting of isosmolar or hyperosmolar hyponatremia so discussion ends here only you have this treatment goes further but if it is the if the serum osmolality is low then this true hyponatremia then from here on we can go as the algorithm suggests the next step will be assess volume status and this is a very gray zone assess volume status is a very gray zone it depends upon how the clinician approaches the patient. 
तो हाउ टू एसेस वॉल्यूम स्टेटस फर्स्ट इज क्लिनिकल और यू कैन यूज रेडियो लैबेल्ड हिमोग्लोबिन और आरबीसी और अल्बुमिन एंड द गोल्ड स्टैंडर्ड विल बी वॉल्यूम व्यू बट वंस यू हैव डिसाइडेड the volume status we have to divide into three part first is called hypervolemic then euvolemic then hypovolemic hypervolemic is quite obvious if you see the patient take history and physical examination you will find out the patient is drowning on its own body fluid patient is having edema ascites pleural effusion swollen face everything so it is very obvious the hypervolemic to diagnose hypervolemic is very obvious the problem comes when to difference between the euvolemia and hypervolemia there we can apply this method of clinical and history and physical examination or you can use advanced method like radio label rbc or albumin or you can use the volume view to find out whether the patient is hypovolemic or euvolemic correct so hypervolemia the differential is very straight forward we have adhf we have nephrosis we have gi protein loss we have hypo albu menemia right now when it comes to euvolemia and hypovolemia how to differentiate here we have to practice another two sets of investigation and that will be urinosomes urine osmolality and urine spot sodium correct so now come to hypovolemia so what will happen in hypovolemia let us come to this picture when there will be hypovolemia there will be secretion of arginine vasopressin or avp or adh hormone in the posterior pituitary and that will act on the v2 receptor retain free water in the body at the same time because of hypovolemia the flow will be decreased here and when the flow is decreased the jg apparatus is, is turned on when it is turned on renin is turned on angiotensin is turned on aldosterone is turned on Now what it will do is it will absorb sodium into the blood stream along with water by the AVP. It will be absorbed in the collecting tube. So what comes out will be a urine which which will be very concentrated because all the water are being reabsorbed. It's a protective mechanism because there is hypovolemia. The urine will be concentrated. urine osm will be greater than the serum osms but urine sodium will be less than 20 because sodium is reabsorbed evenly to retain water so this is in hypovolemia so in hypovolemia what we will find is if it is a non renal cause that means we have diarrhea dehydration hemorrhage vomiting what will happen we will have a urine osm which will be greater than the serum osm we will have a concentrated urine 
and the urine sodium will be typically less than 20 correct so if it is a renal cause of hypovolemia and that will be cerebral salt wasting diuretics mineralocorticoid deficiency right so in this situation what will happen because the ADP system is functioning very well so the urine ozone will be greater than serum ozone but now because this renal cause sodium retention will not be proper and it is it will be very very high because the renal system of retaining the sodium is not working so urine sodium will be more than 40. Now coming to euvolemia so the next step will be if patient is having primary polydipsia or beer potomania or tea and toast diet in this situation what will happen because patient drinks a lot of water the serumosome here will be more than urinosome so the patient will have a dilute urine this is the only case in the whole discussion the patient will have a dilute correct so when the serumosome is greater than urinosomes then you will have to zero down to your diagnosis it's a case of more solute and less solvent from for the patient patient is taking more solvent but less solute so that is producing a water overload in the body and that is producing a hyponatremia because there is water overload the body is trying to get rid of those water so the serum osmolality actually will be higher than the urine osmolality correct urine will be dilute and the second thing is SIADH what happens in SIADH in SIADH everything is functioning well in this two picture except for that the AVP is released without any stimulus there is no hypovolemia in the body but the AVP is released from some other source and it's causing the retention of free water and that is causing hyponatremia sodium is being written as it should be in euvolemic state by aldosterone so what will happen because water is getting reabsorbed the urine will be concentrated so urine osmolality will be high so what is the differential diagnosis for SIDH it will be small cell CA of lung and there are plethora of medicine medications and there are many causes so what, what, whenever you diagnose SIDH it's not the final diagnosis you have got SIDH now you have to find out why there is SIDH and what will happen to the parameters as you have discussed the urine will be concentrated so urine osm will be more than serum osms what will happen to urine sodium it will be more than 20 why because aldosterone is working the sodium will be written but it will not be written like in hypovolemic state so there will be some sodium loss in the urine but it will be more than 20 and in cerebral salt wasting it will be more than 40 correct in cerebral salt wasting it will be more than 40 in SIDH it will be more than 20 so that you can find out that these two things are similar now how the difference is between cerebral salt wasting and SIDH based on sodium you can differentiate if it is very high more than 40 then it is CSW if it is more than 20 but not more than 40 in between it can be SIDH but SIADH and CSW has, can have common pathology in the brain so it is very very important to differentiate between SIADH and CSW because treatment is different it is hypovolemic you have to give fluid here you have to restrict fluid and another way how you can differentiate between, between these two is by seeing the volume status and how to see the volume status we can have clinical history and physical examination radiological albumin and volume view correct so now coming to the hypervolemia 
what happens in hypervolemia is it is otherwise a functional hypovolemia because although the body is filled with fluid dilated so there is an underfilled state the body assumes that the body the vascular system is underfilled so it's exactly what like this hypovolemia model so what will happen the urinosomes will be higher than seromosomes and urine sodium will be more than 20 or less than 20 depending upon the cause of if it is a renal cause for example nephrotic syndrome it will be more than 20 if it is non renal cause ADHF nephrosis and all it will be less than 20 right so this is how we reach at a diagnosing starting from hyponatremia correct now another very important concept whenever you diagnose SIADH you have to first rule out hypothyroidism so you send a TSH level and you have to rule out glucocorticoid deficiency so you have to send a cortisol level correct after only you have excluded these things are not there then this is SIADH and if patient is not diagnosed of any of the pathology or the, and you have checked the medication list and there is no culprit medication that can produce SIDH, the patient has to evaluate it further by CT brain, chest x-ray and other things to rule out any occult malignancy in the patient, right? Now I have a five step approach to hyponatremia and that will be further simplified for all of you. So let us discuss that. So what is my five step approach? How I approach hyponatremia? First is check serum osmolality. So if it is normal or high, discussion ends here. Because if it is normal or high, we have separate differential diagnosis so it, it will not come under two hyponatremia so if it is the second second step will be check the patient correct if you have obvious overloaded patient then this is the obvious diagnosis this hyponatremia is due to hypervolemia so if you, if you can check the patient patient is wholly overloaded si is uh, puffy uh, face there is real effusion pedal edema sacral edema so then the patient is volume overloaded the hyponatremia is straightforward hypervolemia third is check urine osm and serum osm if urinosome is less than serumosomes what does it mean is there's a dilute urine then we have only one diagnosis that is it can be primary polydipsia and so on so forth here fourth step will be check urine sodium if urine sodium is less than 20 then we have only one diagnosis that is non renal cause of hypovolemia the number 5 if urine sodium is more than 20 it is it is at this time only we have to be very careful to differentiate between CHW versus SIADH that you can do by looking at the volume status 
as I described earlier. Or if it is urine sodium is more than 40, it goes more in favor of CSW. If it is more than 20, it's 20 to 40, it goes to SIDH. Check history, meds list, check CT brain for brain pathology, right? It's only at this point we have an ambiguity. Otherwise, if you follow this 5 percent formula, we will absolutely reach at a diagnosis and the treatment will follow. So today we have discussed in the beginning about the concept of water and sodium balance in the body. We have discussed about what is the formula for serum osmolality, how sodium is the predominant force in maintaining the osmolality. Then we have discussed about hyponatremia, the different algorithms or how to reach at a diagnosis starting from different lab values like serum osmolality, like urine osmolality, urine spot sodium and how to reach at a diagnosis. And then we have discussed a very wonderful formula, five step formula of how to reach at a diagnosis. In the next class, we will discuss about the treatment algorithm and what to be careful of while dealing with hyponatremia treatment. Thank you very much.